Well, a great and effectual door is open. Do you see it? Yep, 1 Corinthians uh, 9. Was that what I said? Was it 9? Anyway, this pandemic has been a door into some nightmares and it has been a door into some opportunities because where people suffer, that's where Holy Spirit is. That's where Jesus goes to talk to them and to minister to them and to bring people out of that hard place. And I have a guest today, Wesley Leake, who from the very beginning of the pandemic, he didn't look at the problems. He didn't look at at what was difficult about it, what was scary and what was, oh, my goodness, what is the church going to do? I've known Wes for over 20 years and true to character, he looked at, oh, my goodness, people are hurting, people are frightened, what can I do? And he went to prayer and asked God, about what can he do. Please make welcome the wonderful Wesley Leake. Welcome to the show, Wes. Thank you, Trish. So <laughs> great to be on with you today. And a great oh. topic to talk about as well. <laughs> Look, it, it really is. There has been so much negativity and fear and people worrying about uh, people. A lot of pastors have been genuinely and legitimately frightened and people not being able to go to church for such a long time and it's like there's been two ways to think about it one has been that that to to push back and be upset about people not being able to come to church and fighting against that and worrying about people um not being part of within the four walls of the church and and maybe where are their tithes going to go mm, i miss the few conversations around that but but also um getting caught up in how we are going to survive and yet there are others there, there was an upset there was a shift uh, but you were out I, I saw with my own world but you're in a number of worlds of people you a number of demographics that you look after so talk to me about 18 months ago when it started and we thought it wouldn't be long but then it was getting a bit long was getting a bit frightened what was happening in your world then and what were you thinking about well actually Trish, one, one of the key things just before we went into lockdown i'd actually listened to a podcast uh by another guy from melbourne and he asked this question who are you pastoring at this time and and i thought oh god that's a very interesting question and so I started to ponder that, God, who who are you calling me to pastor at this time? And yeah. and actually, the, the, what came back from God was something very different I wasn't expecting. He said, I want you to pastor your estate. And I said, you want me to do what? How do I pastor my estate where we live in? And then... Um, your then neighbourhood. My neighbourhood. Your neighbourhood. Okay. Yes. So we're going to talk about a number of different areas, but this was... Where, where God started me off. And uh, because we have quite a defined estate where we live in, there's about 200, 200 homes in our estate. And we've lived here for, I don't know, 80, we're, yeah, actually 19 years. We just, 19 years ago, last week we bought the house. Um, so God said to me, you got to pastor your estate. And I said to him, well, how the heck do you pastor an estate? Like, even though we lived here so long, we didn't, like, we knew our neighbors. We actually have eight physical neighbors uh, because of, we have a battle axe block. Uh, so we knew them and we knew some others in the estate, but I didn't really know how I was going to pass to the estate. And then I was just listening to an ABC uh, report was talking about that um, people were setting up Facebook groups for their street or, you know, those around them so that they could care for their neighborhood. So, so I felt God say, that's your answer to set up a Facebook group for our estate. Uh, so we did that. We put a letter together. Uh, the kids and I went and letterboxed all the houses together. So we now have 90% of our estate in this Facebook group. Wow. Which is just incredible. <laughs> and it's just, but Trish, one of the things with it is, is that, okay, God, so, so what are you asking us to do with this? You know, because I mean, what does pastoring an estate look like? And he, he, he made it very clear. It's, it's not, my job is not to evangelize them. My job is to pastor them, so which is different. So part of that was taking care of each other. So we, we actually got everyone to introduce themselves. And actually the funny way that they did that was they put um, pictures of their dogs up 
<laughs> so, that, so that when, because in those early days of the pandemic, you know, we're allowed out to um, to walk for a certain period of time. You stay. So people would take their dogs out. So we'd get to know who their dogs were. And actually it was interesting because when dogs now get on the loose in the neighbourhood, we know whose dog is whose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Messi's say that. But um, so a couple of other things came up, it, like um, coming up to Easter, I just had this thing that we do an Easter egg competition. And so we got all the kids to um, uh, do co a colouring competition for Easter. And we had like 37 kids in the neighbourhood. And I went out and I, oh, my wife is a bit upset. I spent about $80 on very big, you know, very nice Easter eggs. And we gave them away. And actually, it was fascinating because coming up to Easter this year, we thought, oh, what are we going to do this year? And Pam and I thought we should do it again. But then we had lockdown three days before Easter this year. And um, so I went out again, got Easter eggs. But actually, someone else from the neighbourhood donated enough Easter eggs for every kid in our neighbourhood. So we, we, gave away, we, had, we had 37 kids at our place. <laughs> oh, hang on. Hang on. Wait a minute. Is that allowed? <laughs> well, it be, well, because lockdown finished at 4 o'clock on Easter Thursday afternoon. So at 5 o'clock, oh. we had 37 kids to come to our house. They oh. showed us what they'd done and we drew out the hat and stuff like that. And then, Fantastic. Um, and another interesting thing was um, coming up to Halloween last year, everyone started posting who's going to do trick-or-treating. And I was, I was beside myself. Because um, we'd been fairly strict with our kids that they weren't to do Halloween or celebrate it. And, and I'm thinking, oh, God, here I am facilitating <laughs> something that I don't believe in. But, so it was, it was a real struggle for me. Anyhow, it was interesting. So I just started praying, God, what do we do? And um, I was talking to another prophetic friend of mine and just sharing how beside myself I was about it. And uh, I hear God clearly say, drop the trick, just treat. Drop oh. the trick, just treat. So wow. we put on so we put on a saucy sizzle. I got a friend to come in and do um, face painting. And um, someone else saw what we we're doing and offered us a fairy floss machine. And oh, I didn't cool. know how much fairy floss actually been. So Trish, we had over a hundred people at our house that night in our driveway. Like they were, as the kids were going around trick or treating, they'd come to our place. They'd get a sausage sizzle. They'd, um, uh, you know, uh, have some fairy floss. The kids would get their face painted. And but you know, one of the wonderful things from that was we learnt um, what actually had happened in the six months by then that we'd started this Facebook group. The neighbours were having drinks with each other. That oh, people had finally met who the person next to them was. And now all these people were gathering together and stuff like that. So it was very, that was very comforting uh, for yeah. us. So, so actually with Halloween coming up, we're doing it again this year. And um, actually I just got word yesterday that a uh, local real estate agent is going to sponsor that for us. <gasps> Fantastic. So, so it's, it's really, um, so it's going to be obviously, and we've already put some stuff out there about that. So it's really good. But the other things that have happened, like um, oh, we had a, a couple in, in the estate get evicted from their house. You know, be, the the rental thing had come up and they were asked to right. leave. So they put it up on the Facebook group and said, you know, guys, we've just been evicted. Uh, our, our owner wants to move back in. We want to stay in the estate. And within an hour, somebody else on the estate put up, well, actually, we're moving out to another house. Come and move in our house. Like wow. within an hour. And um, the other thing is, too, is we're facilitated people working with each other. Like, so we've got plumbers and uh, electricians. And it, it's actually amazing how many uh, people have businesses in our state, which is, as you know, is one of my passions. So all these yes. people have been doing business with each other. Um, Sam, my son, now has six lawns he mows on a regular basis. Aww. So a good income coming in. But it's facilitated those kind of things. Um you know, sadly, we've had three deaths in the in the neighbourhood because um, just for so it's you know we've been able to go around and meet with them and talk with them and you know those kind of things. Um, uh, well, hold on, hold on. Let me let's not gloss over that. You you created an environment in your neighbourhood where you were able to build relationship with people, and so that when they did have something big happen. You were able to be there. Yeah. You, yeah. you were able to bring that comfort. Yes. That's, 
that's community, isn't it? Now, look, if, if you're watching the program, please give us a thumbs up, give us a like, or, and, and by all means, pop a comment in and I'll keep an eye out for comments and we'll bring them up. And I'd love to hear what's what's happening in your neighbourhood and uh, and maybe tag someone to let them know that we're having this in this conversation. I am with Wesley Leake, who is the head of Business Blessings. He looks after uh, Christians in business, but he's done so much more than that. Uh, just just with the different projects. So the, the heart of this man just inspires me. So yeah, tell me more, Wes. Is it, I think I think one of the things is is actually created um, like an openness for people to to actually care for each other um, and be there for do that. So again, it's like and we had a very practical thing yesterday. My daughter got swooped by a magpie, uh, and she got actually got quite a um, big chunk of her head taken out. And wow. so, um, so I just put up in the group, "Hey guys, what's the issue with this magpie?" And then I suddenly got all these other people telling me that they're being swooped and they're being attacked. So I'm thinking, no one's done anything about this. So anyhow, we've had the council around and they're going to look at moving this magpie and stuff like that. So it's some very practical things. And we've had, um, we had a rise of break-ins a month or two ago. So then the neighbourhood was able to rally. And so everyone was looking out for each other saying, hang on a minute, um, did anyone see anything? And then we're able to find out who had security cameras and they'll be able to give that stuff to the police and all those kind of things come up. But but part of that was noticed because people knew that certain cars shouldn't have been in the estate, you know, but wow. we, we were able to facilitate and, and, and the, hopefully the police have caught the, the people who are doing that. Because, well, I, I know that all those breaking stuff have died down. So that's, that's really good. So, so there's been some very practical things. Even just we know now who all the JPs are in our area. So you know it's amazing. Like, like you know, there's some very practical things um, that take place in communities that that if you're not talking to your neighbours, you, you don't know those things. Yeah. So it's it's um yeah so it's very good. <laughs> it, it's so <laughs> true. I found the same thing when I would take Dash for a walk around in the morning. I, I met so many people and, and I just, I always talk to them, you know, whether yeah. they look like they want to or not, I always <laughs> make friends yeah. with them. And, you know, that's going to be good for business as well because when I do a letterbox drop for, um, so my husband Justin has a solar panel business, if you need solar panels, call us, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and it is actually one of our neighbours that we've, we've done and, and I'll be drop and I'll say, hey, it's Trish and Little Dash here, put a photo on it. And, and let them know and and there's yeah. that no like and trust and what am I look we live there so yes. you know it's and and looking out for one another and each other's dogs and pets and and health and yes. checking on and there's a warmth there and even though they're back to work now many of them uh, when I'm walk I always get a wave and and it's a connected friendly wave it's not just the yeah. the one that you do just for strangers so and I know yes. that there would be any one of these neighbors quite likely that I could go and knock on their door and say, oh, look, you know, could you give me a hand with something? And they will. Yeah. You know, I know. And, 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 and this is like, there's, <laughs> this, sorry, um, neighbours have been, like they're giving away things. Someone set up a library so that you mm. can, you know, when those, they put it there. Um, if anyone's got anything that they need to get rid of, the first port of call is they put a photo up in the Facebook group and and often Great. that stuff goes. Um yeah, so it's been it's been very good to see that kind of stuff. But it was it was about creating community. It was a very simple way uh, to do that. But it, it's I've been amazed at how many doors is there so open okay. for us. Well, as well. I want to move on to what you did in the wider community because yep. you normally look after business people. Yes. And what you did though is you had an idea for a, a Facebook online summit i guess for want yes. of a better word and you reached out to me and you said trish can you I, i've got this idea for a group for for women at that time you've done other things as well and you said trish can you bring a word of encouragement for them and at the time i thought i'm not doing anything online i don't really know what i'm doing there what do i do so talk to me about that and and, and that was actually the start of motivating me to actually get my stuff out yeah. Yeah. So, so that was an interesting thing because again, so that was, we did that in April last year and I'd been hearing from a number of women who owned um, 
businesses and things that they were struggling with connecting to the community and, and getting business and stuff like that. So I thought, well, <laughs> why don't we set up a Facebook group? So we did Women Providing Hope. Um, actually, well, actually, I'll, I'll tell you a backstory to this. Someone had contacted me from the US and said, could you do an interview with me? And I was actually in the shower saying, God, I like, like, love this person. She's great. But I felt God say, I want to do something bigger than just one person. And uh, so uh, I had three women come on and said, hey, what do we do? And the idea then came that we do a, like we did a summit from I think nine o'clock in the morning to 11 o'clock at night. And we had a different woman come in and speak every half hour on huge different topics. So we, we actually got all these people to invite different people. And we ended up with a Facebook group of about 1,700 women um, who then came on and watched um, those um, the different different speakers speak and like everything from well, you came on uh, Trish and talked about hope and peace Had someone talk about um, practical stuff about cooking and exercise and all sorts of different things there. <laughs> hey, look, there you are, Trish. <laughs> there I am. Yes. That's the, um, I was trying to make it a bit bigger. That's a screenshot. Oh, there we go. So that was in my office upstairs, no fancy background just it is, and uh, and bringing a word of encouragement. And I would not have done that if you had not said to me, Trish, this is I, I want to do this and people need what you've got to say, and not just me, there's other people. Uh, and it was as much a blessing to me to have to do that or to, to be pushed, thank you, Wes, yes. to, to do this uh, as it was. I mean, you know, the, the lighting wasn't great, the, but... but we did it, and and that's I, I want to encourage people. Don't wait till things are perfect. You don't have to get everything perfect, but just just to reach out. And and this turned into something pretty big. Yes, it did. So, and, and you know, Trisha, one of my roles is to encourage people to get them out and to actually do stuff. And and that's what I find like often people have done their first Facebook live with me where I've interviewed and stuff like that because they're afraid to do those kind of things. But it's um actually there's a statement I always say that even Jesus needed someone to vouch for him. So and that's like Joseph, his dad, vouched for Jesus, like because um it gave him credibility because this was the this was his heritage. You know, and, and Joseph trained Jesus up, you know, as a carpenter and all that kind of stuff. And he took he took him to the synagogue. He took him, he he helped him build those relationships and get connected. So if Jesus needs someone to do that, mm. then then we do as well. You know, we and do. I, yes, and it and it, you know, sometimes it's just because business is all about relationship, and sometimes it's one connection to another. You know, I um I'm on a board of a school and we had a board meeting yesterday and it just, um, it, they said to me at the start of the meeting, where's there's some stuff we need to talk about, which is all your fault. And I thought, Oh heck, what have I done now? <laughs> and it, it was because they had a, a major problem in getting financing and they were trying different places. Couldn't find anyone. I said, Oh, look for heaven's sakes, try this person. And so they talked to them and, and now their financing issue is all solved. So, you know, it's being able to connect people together is very, very key to do that. It is. And uh, one of the ladies who was involved with the, uh, the the Facebook page and the things is Amber and she's just saying thank you. Yes. You know, thank you. And it's good to have you on, Amber. Um, I, it, it's and This is my way of saying thank you to Wes as well uh, but and using this to encourage other people to, to think beyond even though things are tough, there's an opportunity when things are tough to see where you can serve and think outside the box and outside the four walls. So that's well, great. And I think, you know, we tried different online events prior to the pandemic. Like I always tried to live stream and stuff like that, but it was nowhere near the take up that we have now because people are actually used to this stuff now. And, mm. and actually, I think... I've got an appointment today and he just assumed it would be a Zoom meeting. And I said, well, why don't we catch up for coffee? He said, oh, no, Zoom is fine. And because there's still that hesitancy about going out and, and meeting people and stuff like that. So it's, well, it's yeah. time consuming as well, Wes. No, you know, I know. I'm at Caboolture. If I were to come and have a meeting with you, 
Yes. I've got to drive for an hour. Yeah. Uh, have the meeting. Consider what time what the traffic is doing yes. to come back north again. Yeah. I've got to put proper pants on instead yes. of my hair. Like, <laughs> yes. Yes. I've got to put shoes on and and you know it, it, it's actually a more efficient use of time to to do a zoom. Not only that, uh, one of my girlfriends who is single lives with two cats. She had to work from home. Now her only people contact was her job during yeah. that time and she had yeah. to go home. And so we arranged to have a Zoom lunch. Yeah. So yeah. we we sat down, we we said, Oh, what have you got for lunch? What have I got for lunch? You know, you've got tuna, I've got whatever it was, leftovers. And we chatted for that time frame. And then she went back to work. And before she went back to work, I did say to her, I wish I could hug you. That's what I would do normally. She said, I know. So I said, you know what? Let's do that anyway. And and one of the things that I've been doing, and I encourage other people to, and I know fellas, you can do this well, you know, if you feel comfortable to, but to when you're when you're online, you can put your arms around yourself and you can, and the other person does, you close your eyes, you will you will get that let down of chemicals in your brain that will bring comfort and warmth and bonding and that will lower your cortisol it'll help your cortisol drain out and so that you are it, it just eases that stress and so when you're connecting online not only that Wes you're in that other person's house through the screen you're yeah. not at a function room there's yeah. an intimacy of that togetherness Yes. That I and, love. As you, there's been some research on this because um, staff are now seeing what their managers' houses are like and there's actually been a great leveller because sometimes they've thought that they live in this, uh, you know, more expensive home and they found out that actually it's just about the same as them and it's been very interesting. It, yes. it really has, yeah. And and actually it, um, it has another effect from a business point of view, and I made this point on a Zoom this morning uh, about because because I talk to leaders and teams about their, their skills with their people and building resilience and getting through things with them. And uh, I realised that, you know, if you've, <laughs> you've got your manager on the screen looking at you and you're in your lounge room, spare bedroom, whatever it is, that is somebody in your house speaking to you about work stuff and maybe if you're a leader and you feel like you need to give someone your opinion or a correction or a discipline, check yourself in how you talk to them because you're in someone else's home Mm -hmm. and they deserve the respect of you're in their home and you want to, you know, the attitude that you bring, well, you shouldn't be rough with them anyway. But, you know, if you're at work and you've, you're someone who yells and says, you know, what do you think you're doing? You would not do that in someone's home. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about in the psycho. They might just say, you know what, get out. Yeah. And I'm leaving and I'm joining the great exodus who's quitting work. Yes, uh, and and getting a job somewhere else, and sometimes too with uh, with churches, there's been uh, a bit of a an exodus from some churches and an entrance to others because people have been people have been trying out other churches without in the privacy of their home, so they're not they're not getting caught out visiting somewhere else. So, <laughs> like I confess that some Sundays I would have stopped into about five different services, which is which is actually it was actually very good because it's. Like, you know, like you, Trish, you'd have friends that have churches and are ministering in churches. And, yeah. like, you want to support them and encourage them, but you're also torn because you go to your own church um, in doing that. So it was a good way to actually see what others do, and, and so it's great. It, I, it I really was. And it yeah. smartened things up too because, you know, you could see the quality. And, and while some leaders and pastors might might have felt intimidated by the, you know, the bigger churches have got all the whiz-bang, you know, gear and the lighting and everything, and some of them were 
you know, maybe sitting in a lounge chair with, you know, just the sloppy stuff going on and, and the poor lighting and so on, you can create, you know, at the start people had grace for things looking terrible. I, I was actually in a Bible study and I just had to, um, there was one man sitting there and he had the camera on his leg going up his sort of shorts, up his shirt. It was, all, and, I, and I was like, oh, I mean, I couldn't see anything, that, but, but it was like I really wanted to say, hey, buddy, yes. do I have, can, you know, I mean, we talk yeah. about how women dress and I just went, I really don't want to be looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so we've had that journey, but, but we, you can do a lot. You can do a lot to, to set up and deliver something. You, all you need is a, is a phone yeah. and, a, and a light good lighting and a, and a microphone and, and a background that doesn't have your undies hanging off the, the doorknob. Yes, yes, please. yes, yes. So, and have so, a go. And some very simple things, you know, and that's the thing. Um, but, two, it's it's the connection, connection with people. Like, like I, as you know, I, I lecture as well. And so I have um, students uh, because obviously students can't come to Australia. So, you know, I've got students sitting in their homes in China, India, Nepal, mm. um, the Nordic countries, Colombia, Spain. And it's, it's just like, how do we actually connect with each one and get to know each one? Um, cause I've got, you know, 50 people in each class and, and it's, it's, it's a thing, but there are little things that you can do to connect with people and make sure you reach out to them and, and touch them, which is, which is very key. And, and you, it, these are learned things, so you can do it. I, I love that. I love that. So tell me some of the other initiatives you've done over the 18 months because, I mean, I get your emails through. I, I can't keep up with the things. I tell you, one thing I have joined is your early Wednesday morning Brisbane time, 6 a.m., which will be 7 a.m. Uh, in the daylight savings in the eastern border, yes. that you have um, a, prayer, a, a listening to God prayer meeting it, it's not a big we're all getting in and raging in and praying us praying up a storm it's 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 a beautiful intimate time that i covet uh of, of tell us about that well um you know trish one of my roles is i sit on the national day of prayer and fasting team for australia and so which means <laughs> i've been attending prayer meetings a fair bit and it's um i i did something i shouldn't have done <laughs> i actually started really? to <laughs> I started listening to people praying <laughs> and, and, you, and, and it, it really highlighted to me some things. And I thought, oh, um, because one of the things that I'm very conscious of is that Jesus is interceding for us at this very point in time in the throne room. And I want to know what's on his heart to pray. So listening to him and then praying that into being. And then I had a, a couple of other people contact me and just said, where's I'm tired of going to different prayer meetings. So we have a friend of mine who's a prayer pastor at Stairway Church in Melbourne. And she talked about running the sitting at the feet of Jesus prayer meetings. And I said to her, Karen, come on, uh, let's get a group of people together. So I, did, I put it out there. I had like 40 people turned up and, uh, she ran uh, a thing about how to, how she runs a thing at the feet of Jesus time. So since that was in March this year, so now we do it every fortnight on Friday nights. So we've got another one tonight. And then and then um, I did another time, which is Wednesday morning. And as Trish, you know, we've got quite a group of people who meet every Wednesday morning. But it's the whole thing is we have a passage of scripture. We sit for 20 minutes and listen to what God has to say to us through that passage. I encourage people to read it through at least seven times. Generally, there's a question that I've given them to, to, to ask God about, and then we come back together and we share what God has spoken to us about. And, um, and it's just powerful because one of the things is we hear the voice of God in community. So as a community, we hear uh, what God is, is speaking to us about, and it's just powerful. And um it's been incredible too to see uh, what God has done through that and how He's taken people on a journey through that as well. So it's a great time, as you know. <laughs> it, it really is. Uh, the, the initiatives that you've had. What would you? What uh, as we wrap up? What would you say to pastors who may be feeling like 
it's all just too hard. Um, they're, they're pressing into God, but people are, they might be feeling like people are unreliable. They're not coming. They're not faithful. How do I, how do I get them to do things? And, and maybe they're just feeling a bit exhausted uh, and, and, and a bit put upon because, you know, the, the bigger churches that have the finances and the facilities and the people and the volunteers and all that sort of thing, uh, and, and people are not fitting into the programs that they used to fit into and it's just, it's just different now. So what, what words of wisdom and comfort uh, would you give I, those guys? Um, for, look, I know a number of business people in, that I'm connected to who have left their church over the last 12 months um, and, and, or 18 months now. <laughs> it just keeps going on. But one of the reasons for that is they, they realise that they weren't connected in. And, um, you know, sometimes I think we need, to have a program or something, but actually it's, it's a phone call. It's a text. It's spending time with them. It's, um, uh, I, I listened to a podcast from another church last weekend who said that, I mean, they're, they're a large church, but they, they had everyone from the, the cafe person up making phone calls. And they said they were, they're averaging between eight to 9,000 phone calls a week. The staff are just doing that. Mm. I would say just pick up the phone, reach out, actually, have a Facebook group that actually builds community. That's not about just promoting these are the events of the church, but actually getting people um, to interact as a community. And I guess that's what we've found with our neighborhood group. It's, it's, it's not based around an event or anything. It's based around relationship, which is a shift. Um, and it comes back to uh, even some I was teaching my students yesterday that um, it's not about B2B or B2C. It's about person to person. And even in a ministry situation, it's about person to person. Because even, even if you are selling to a business or a corporate, it's it's a person in there who's making that decision. So it's really about how do we how do we build relationship with people? And um, it, I, I think it's actually getting back to like <laughs> it is a, you know, we've had a huge shift to the apostolic and prophetic, which is great and I love, but it's actually pastoring for people. And pastor, like, you know, pastors in the old days would have to go and knock on doors and actually go into people's homes and, and see them and see what there's yeah. nothing like going into someone's home and seeing what condition the home is to know what it's like. It's one of the reasons why I love yeah. actually going into people's businesses because you actually see what the business is and what it looks like. You can touch it, you can taste it, you know. Um, you know, you can see the staff and what they're doing and the way way the staff react to the business owner and stuff like that is um, is is actually doing that. So picking up the phone, seeing that, making I comments. love that. I love that. And picking yeah. up the phone, you know, so many people used to say, uh, oh, they're just so busy. And I, I, I would hate receiving, I don't mind a group text which says, hey, such and such is on at 8 o'clock Wednesday night, you know, blah, blah, blah. But a group text that says, oh, hey, just letting you know I'm thinking about you and caring about you and it's my name isn't on it. I know it's yeah. gone out to everybody. It's like, please yes. don't. Yes. Like, call me. Yes. Or the other thing that, that, that uh, our church had done was they did give certain leaders a list and I got a call from someone uh, and he said, oh, I just ring and say, hey, how you doing? I said, oh, am I on the list? And he goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, and, but I didn't mind. He was a bit embarrassed. He didn't want me to feel like I'm only calling because I'm on the list, even though he was really only calling because he'd been given a list to call. Yeah. But because we were on the spot on the phone, he said, well, yeah, but I really do want to know how you are and how you're yeah. going. And so it was personal. And we had a good chat. And, yeah, it's time-consuming, but that's pastoring. And he wasn't a pastor. He was, bless you, he, he, he was someone that I knew not overly well, but I actually got to know our families, you know, got to know his family better. And uh, I think too much emphasis, even with, especially in, in going online to, in the pandemic, too much emphasis has been put on, the performance online yeah. and the quality of technology, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and the excuse that, well, we can't visit one another 
so we can't connect but it actually should be our reason to connect more uh, and yes it can be virtual but not everybody's in lockdown now we do need to be careful and we do need to be we need to be respectful of of um, the boundaries where you know there's some churches who've said oh we don't bother with masks we're just going to hug it and do all that sort of thing well you know that might be fine if you're in an area where it doesn't have any but some people have compromised immune systems and and they 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 just want to feel a bit cared about and respected so that you you follow the rules but that doesn't stop you from still showing the care and warmth you know so you can see that as an obstacle or you can see that great and what was it so, say great and virtual door it's a virtual yeah. door but yeah see seeing door. yeah but just, I, I think this is a very simple thing with that is to actually ask them so like like i you know when i many people said you know do you put like often i wait do they put their hand out will they shake it or not you know or if they're going to put their elbow out you know i do what mm. i i kind of do what they're going to do but it's also like you know in business you get to know your own clients like you mm. know um like i have some clients that i phone some clients i text some clients i message on facebook you know or or on linkedin it's actually getting to know who the people are and even asking them what is the best way for me to contact you or is there best time for me to contact you or do you mind if i pop into your business or do you mind if i come around and like what suits them and some say no some say yes or they tell you but even to ask them you know yep. yeah yeah and flipping it around too that um that it's your your job is to pastor them yeah and some pastors have the idea that they are the leader, they are the boss, therefore uh, they're the ones deserving of the honour and people need to uh, fit in with them, uh, which isn't really servant. And I'm not saying be a doormat, but with business people, they can't necessarily, if they're running a shop, they can't, you can't have your PA call that person and, and say, oh, you know, Pastor Smith Jones, whatever, uh, would like to see. Can 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 you come in at three o'clock on Tuesday? Well, we'll know actually. I'm, yeah. I've got a shop. I've got customers, and yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and you know, be that little bit flexible because that's that's what pastoring is. And and maybe go out to the shop like like you've said. You know, with with what you do with business blessings. How about you know. I mean, I hate coffee shop meetings because it's noisy and it's you, you can't get personal. I always would. I used to always have people at my home because I knew that if, there'd probably be tears when yes. you know people get. I get very personal with people very quickly. Sometimes from me, often from them, but it, the intimacy in their space where they can feel comfortable to be vulnerable is coffee shop stuff is nice for your shallow conversations and your and your motivating conversations, but. You know, you really want to connect with someone. You meet in their space where they can be comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Trisha, I learned something a number of years ago. I mean, this is going back in 2008 during the GFC, which is a while ago now. We um, uh, we live in the Wynnum area, and I felt God say to go door to door with the businesses. So we actually got a team oh. of 10 people together, and we actually went door to door and and said to them, look, it's a, it's a difficult time. We're just here to pray for you, um, and and we we had a, a business Bible, the Bible Society put together and stuff like that. And so we we went in in twos. Um, so there's five teams of us that went around, and we did 230 businesses in a day. It was crazy stuff, and we had t-shirts and things on doing that. But you know, it's something I I learned is that people actually want you to pray for them. Yes. And yes. so you know, we go in and say, "Hey, we're just here to encourage you. Is it okay if we pray for you?" And like so, <laughs> I remember I was in this dress shop, and and the lady said, "Well, you're going to do it right now." I said, "Okay." And I'm looking around. There's customers everywhere. She said, "Well, let's pray now." You know, and, oh. and even, even like the adult shop was on my route, and I thought, "Oh God, do I even go in?" <laughs> <laughs> did you? Did you go in? You did. Did we you? Did. I did. Who are I you? Eyes with. We're just going to look straight ahead at the man. <laughs> But he was a lovely coffee man. <laughs> and, and, and 
really great conversation with him. A shop full I, of marital aids. Yeah, yes. That's, yeah. So, so it was, you know, but that really taught me something that, um, you know, we actually, at the end of the day, I think that 90% of people said yes to prayer. And Hang on, and hang on. Know, wait, 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 wait. That's huge. 90% of people said yes. When there's a perception that the world is hostile to us, right. you yes. went into the shops, yeah. 90% of people said yes. Are yes. you listening, yes. viewers? People yes. are hungry and they're open. Yes. I've prayed for more people. I have prayed for more people online who in the past would not give a toss about anything to do yeah. with God. And I yes. don't care what spirituality they are, I'll connect with them and pray with them and love them. This is what we can do. Where's it, it, and, so and it, 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 gives, it gives an opportunity for the spirit to move. Yeah. You know, it, because I, Trish, I don't know about you, but I don't have the answers for everything, you know, as much as I like to think I do. But I don't, you know, and say, look, I don't know what it is. And so often you pray for God to give them wisdom or something. And then then you've just got to leave it in God's hands. And then some amazing stuff happens. And oh. you think, Wow, you know, I said this. This is the thing, you know, and um, sometimes I think we've just got to step out and do it, and 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 the results are in God's hands, and that's the thing, you know. So the stuff we've done with the neighbourhood or the um, women providing hope group or the the online stuff that we've done, it's more about well, God, this is, and you know, we, we even had a we had a live event for 110 people at the beginning of the year in a very upmarket place, and I'm still getting feedback. Where's that event changed my life? And I'm thinking all I heard was a whisper saying, invite that person to speak. We got people in the room and you you allow God to move. And I think I think that's very key. Oh, so exciting. Wesley Leak of Business Blessings. I do want, before we finish up, I do want to make sure I share your website. Yes, there it I is. am. There you are. Hi, I'm Wes. There's Wes. Businessblessings.com.au. And. Uh, <clears throat> about hearing the voice of God in business. Yeah, what, so Wes doesn't mind. You don't have to be a Christian. You can get in touch with Wes and talk to him about how this works. And uh, he's got some resources on there, online course. Um, so there's the businessblessings.com.au. Is there anything there you'd like me to draw their attention to, Wes? If you, uh, like if you go into the online courses there, you'll see um, – and there's a great interview with a guy called Bob Bodine, who is just mm -hmm. uh, four women, that's 50 women, four women over 50 telling about how they started their business. You can see the listing oh, prayer. This one here? Yeah. So that, that was a great interview we did with how God had led those four different women to start businesses when they're over 50. Um, the first lady there, she she started, she started a business when she was in her 70s. And, she, she's the hat lady. The, yes. The, Yes, so she she used to make hats for the uh, Quinton Bryce when she was Governor General of Australia. So wow. she has this online business that sells all <laughs> over the world. Um, yeah, she tells this amazing story about that. So there's some great stuff there. The other one that I want to point out is an interview with Bob Bodine. So if we go down just a bit, he wrote this great book called Two Chairs, which I always encourage oh, yeah. people to read. Um, and there's two in that interview. Uh, there it is. There interviews with Bob Bodine. He talked about how God spoke to him prior to the pandemic about setting up all these new companies, which has literally given him 15 years of work in his business. But wow. it was all just in a time with God, three weeks before the pandemic said, said, God said to him, start to do this, this, and this. And he explains it all in there and he just opened it up. But it was a very specific thing for him because he, he's, he literally – um, he's a sports recruiter, and of course, in the US, every sport just shut down. So mm. he lost his business pretty much overnight. But because of what God had said to him three weeks before, all this other stuff unfolded. So it's you know, it's one of the very simple things we talk about is just sitting down and saying, God, what's on your heart for me today? And it's a very it's a question. It can be very dangerous to ask because he, he tends to give you a very different perspective than what you may be thinking. Yeah. So wow. have a look at those and go from there. Right. And, uh, look, you've got some great interviews here. You've got now this one here, Straight Talk About Marriage, Sex and Intimacy. That's uh, if I were to click on that, I that's going to start. This is uh, Sheila Ray 
Gregoire. One, yes. And I was in on that webinar, and that was very much about um, <laughs> about sex in marriage and about equality in marriage. And uh, but, but, the, but also uh, how, how they talk about it. And, and yeah. which, I mean, Sheila, her thing is that she she surveyed twenty thousand women. 20,000 Christian women and got this real insight. But one of the things that, and Trish, this shocked you just as much as it did me, was they looked at the problems that the women or well, the couples were having in the area of sex and realized that a lot of it related to a lot of the major Christian teaching about sex. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and so she she's debunked a lot of theories and stuff that's out there. It's, 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 oh, she's a very brave woman, but very practical. Uh, in there, so it's a, it's a it's a it great. It was brilliant. Wes, yeah. it was brilliant. I bought her book. I I have a, a a a great relationship with my husband, but our early marriage life, because I'd been so scared of falling, it it just it you know, it was just not fun to start with, and then and then you get this you know the the submission teaching being abused. Then um, it's like, you know, anyway, I'm, that's something else that uh, I'm going to pursue in this podcast. Uh, I may catch up with Sheila about that and talking about that because there are some there there are some things that we do. I love church. I'm a pastor's kid. I love the house of God, uh, but we can do better. And and it's not about performance. You know that, that we think we need to do better. But we can believe better and be kinder and and get more breakthrough without without beating each other up. Yeah, that's right. That caring. And it's again, it comes down to relationships. God's a God of relationship, mm. and this uh, like it was um, somebody else was talking to. Oh, well, it was on Wednesday morning. Um, one of the guys, one of the pastors that are on on Wednesday morning, uh, said through the passage that that God just said to him. I, it's not about what you do for me. It's about my relationship with you. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and so that that's there, there, God is, there's this invitation to you. And actually my um, reading this morning, we came back to Genesis one, that when God created us, he called us very good. Um, and just even just, I would, I just allowed that to wash over me this morning. I am very good. Oh. God called me very good. And sometimes you've just got to let that word wash over you and just allow your mind to be changed and transformed to think, hang on, I am very good. I am very good. Wow, I love that. Wesley, would you like to pray for yeah. anybody who's watching now and maybe later on for the recording? Yes. And just, just as you feel led before we finish up. Yeah. <laughs> Father, thank you that for each person who is uh, listening to this or watching this, however they're consuming it, that you made them in your image. Lord, that you uh, watched them over them from the moment that they were formed in their mother's womb. Lord, you took the right DNA from their dad and the right DNA from their mum, and you put them together and you created them, that unique individual, and you say to them, you are very good. Father, I pray that you speak to them, that you guide them, you lead them as they ask you the question, God, what's on your heart for me today, that you'd speak to them and lead them in the way that they should go. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I just want to bless the pastors and leaders who are going through what we're going through and as they emerge and be encouraged that God, you know, when you pull back, listen to god he has a strategy for you you are not forgotten you're not you're not put away but sometimes we just got to put off the um the the things that we think we need to make things happen and just spend that time with him and that's where peace and joy comes from and that's where the refreshing and the ideas come from where's hey, he you know trish just on that and i know we need to finish but it's um no it's all right God has a plan for them and their situation. And it may be very like, like it's 
this whole thing of covetousness and I know is that or jealousy looking at what others are doing and then saying, hang on, that's successful for them. We need to take that. No, stop. That was the plan that God gave them. But what's the plan God's giving you? And it may look different. Like, you know, for us in the neighborhood doing a, a treat night, just it almost went against every bone in my body <laughs> to do that. And even, even my three older kids said to us, mom and dad for, for, um, I know. all years, you know, we're never allowed to do this. But I think, well, hang on a minute, but God is saying this. And even, I, I tell you something else too, Trish, um, when Bethany, our second one, had um, her school formal and no parent was putting on the after party, she came to us and said, do you want to put on the school formal after oh. party? And, of course, you know, like, like <laughs> okay, wow. and, and but actually God spoke to us and said, you will provide a safe place. Wow. Because we we don't drink. Um and, and and I'm not, you know, putting anything out there about that. But I just felt God say you will you will have you will provide a safe place because you won't be drunk and you can, you know, you can monitor what's going on. And so so we did we had 80 kids at our house. You know, and you know, I had to let the neighbors know and everything like that. But you know what was funny is that uh, Bethany School has a large special ed team. And so a lot of those guys came, uh, but they bought um, eskies of ginger beer. <laughs> and so we just, and you know, it's, <laughs> but they were included in and they were part of it. So we had, we, so there was a, quite a board mixture then. And really, we had one or two incidences about it. But the next day at the graduation, so many parents came up to us and said, Thank you that you provided a safe place for our kids to celebrate. And, um, you know, sometimes we've just got to provide, guys ask us to provide a safe place for people. Yeah. There you go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Wes. And you. uh, if you'd like to get in touch with Wes through businessblessings.com.au, you can get in touch with me through trishjenkinsministries.com. And uh, if we can be a blessing to you, to your congregation, then let us know. And uh, keep watching out for these uh, video podcasts. I'm going to be a bit more regular with them and uh, so that they can, you know, strengthen the leaders and support the people and uh, just really to see God's fruit in our lives and the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. If you're feeling weak, it's the joy of the Lord is our strength, all in how you look at it. Ask him to show you how to see things. And where's what we saw is a, a wide and effectual door and you saw it yeah. and you bore much, much fruit. So thank you for that. God bless you. Thank you, Trish.